half-life formula for this, the half-life. The same ideas apply. You can solve for your k by using the half-life equation. And the half-life of that one is, if I remember correctly, is it a bit heavier? <laughs> so this half-life equation is this thing. The half-life equation for second order is different. Yeah, it's dependent on this. Be yeah, so it's really subtle, right? What this the difference between them are, right? Yeah. So it was just k, right? So what this means is that the half-life is dependent on how much you started with, mm -hmm. your initial. So if you started with a mountain of the stuff, the time would be different than if you started with just a little bit of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's dependent on your initial concentration. This number changes, right? Meaning if I start with what? If I start with less, what happens to my t? You know what I mean? If, it's, if I start with less of it, then what? This is, you're dividing by a smaller number, right? So what happens to your t? It gets bigger, right? It gets bigger. <laughs> so that means that if you have more of it, it's gonna, it's gonna, what's gonna look like this? It's gonna be a graph like that, right? You start off, because you have a lot of it, and you're gonna have, it's gonna go down fast, and then it's gonna taper off. That's what that means. Does that make sense? You need to remember this part right here, in particular. And then the same way that we can solve for k by switching t and k. So we can put t down here and k up here. So that gives us a second way of solving for k. All right. I almost want to not go over zero order because it's. Yeah, we won't. You guys. Um, you want, question. Yeah. On your notes, why did you? What did it say? Oh no, just kidding. You good. Zero order, uh, I don't want to put too much in this. You think it's going to be in the test? For zero I didn't have a zero order. Yeah, it's not really asked. I didn't have a zero order. You might encounter it, but um, the, general the, idea? the general idea yeah. is that you use the same formula, the same way you did before, and you can use the half-life formula to solve for k as well. What I would note, though, is that what you should really know is the graphs of zero order, right? It's a line. Yeah. Right, so. So what does my slope look like for the, uh, it's this guy, for per second order, it's a positive slope, right? And then for zero order, it goes down. That's for zero. Wait, just like the first Just like order. first order, yeah. Okay. First order also goes down, yeah. That would be second. Because first order is like. So no, first, right. zero order goes down, zero order first order goes down, and second order goes up. You need to know that, yeah. On your test, one of the sheets here is a, a, a page that looks something like this. It has every, all the information and corresponds with the graph on there too. Okay. I would recommend writing something like that on your cheat sheet. Maybe like a little section that you can write really small. Okay. Right? Like a section. You're, like you're not a better chemist because you can memorize this equation, right? Yeah. So put it on the sheet, <laughs> then don't get the answer wrong, right? Know how to use it though, right? And study with it. So when you're doing your practice problems, you should be studying with the sheet you're gonna use on the test. Yeah, that's how that works, okay. Does that answer your stuff about uh, graphs? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, so we're good with that, yeah. Um, half-lives, someone asked about half-lives? Do you guys feel good about that? Yeah. Cool, going through some problems which we have in the last hour will help. Okay. I, I promise. Quickly, the radius equation. Yeah. Quickly, quickly, quickly. How much time do we have? Uh, we ten, have minutes. ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to do an hour of like problem solving. What do you guys think? Hmm. Want to go into it? This one, or should we go? In? Yeah, we should go. This one. This one is really hard to understand, right? The radius equation. Yeah. Right? Okay. I think everyone struggles with this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, have you feel comfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what? You don't memorize it? What? <laughs> uh, here you Oh, shit. Do I not have it? I should have it. There you go. Quick. A little bit more linearized. Uh, I can do it for you. I'll do the derivation. Okay. Actually, yeah. Maybe we'll go 10 minutes into the hour because we started 10 minutes late. So we'll say we have 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. We could we could probably push as long as we can to see if they'll let us stay, but uh, we'll see.
think. Mm. Technically, the library closes at four. So. Yeah, they take um. us out to like six last time. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm kind of. I think I'm waiting for somebody until six anyway. So I might just stay here. So. Might be lucky. I might be able to stay here. Mm -hmm. Is, is it, does anybody need to leave? Like, you need to leave what time? I have four. I have four? Yeah. Four. My friend's getting ready and I'm gonna go help set up. Don't tell her, don't. Tell her to get married tomorrow. Like, like, <laughs> I know. It's raining, it's not a good time. I know. Get married next week. Next week. <laughs> That's uh. Okay, so A is our frequency factor, so that's how that's how frequent that collisions are happening in a reaction. Okay, then we have activation energy, so how much uh, energy is required to actually initiate that reaction. And then we have this um, this exponential factor. So this is just part of the equation. Okay. E to the whatever the number is is all considered your exponential factor. Right, and that gives you okay. Okay, so then typically, okay, just one more thing. So our R is actually 8.314. Don't confuse it with the other R, which is 0 0.08. Yes, what's up? Temperature, not time. T is uh, temperature. T is temperature, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's look. And is it in Kelvin? Kelvin, yeah. Well, so what's the units for your your, uh, your thing right there, your R? Oh, joules. Joules over mole K, right? Yeah. So um, maybe put highlight this, yeah? Because if they give you something in kilojoules, what do you got to do? Turn it to joules, right? They give it to you in Celsius. If they're jerks, they're jerks, you got to add 273, right? So you need to have, like, just like everything. So adjust your units to your constant. Just everything, your constant determines your units. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is, a, okay, so this is what I really want to focus on, because this is what you're going to get tested on anyway, is uh, this form of the Arrhenius equation. This is your linearized form, okay? It, it's just like the, the integrated um, rate loss. So our, e, our activation energy over R is our slope, and then our one over uh, temperature is our K, I mean, sorry, our X, and then our, our y-intercept is our natural light of A. Okay? That is super important, yeah. So, because you're going to get, on the exam, you're going to have a question where you're given a graph, and it, you're going to be given some kind of equation, and you're going to have to solve for one of these. Okay, so, for example, if they give you, um, I could probably give you some, a ton, a, a, an equation. Okay. Be like, give me a minute here. <clears throat> they actually will give you. Uh, remember, I was telling you they'll give you a graph, y equals you know negative point three mm -hmm. plus something. Yeah. You're, they're going to give you that, and they're okay. not going to give you it in that form. And you need to put it. You in need to then extrapolate the data. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of hard sometimes. Can the slope also be negative? Slope is negative. Yeah. Slope is negative. It oh, is. Okay. Yeah. It is negative. Yeah, if I rewrite that, it was ugly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a little laughs> Does this have to do anything with the orders? Does it have anything to do with the orders? Um, not explicitly, no. Because um, this this is the K in your rate equals K concentration of A. What I just did, what we just did is expanded the K. Because mm -hmm. wouldn't you rather have this instead of this next to your order, your order of your group? Right, because what this <laughs> equation is basically telling you is what what affects your rate, right? Mm -hmm. Frequency factor, temperature, activation energy, so all these things affect your rate, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a slope, sorry. Uh, what are, oh, I don't know. Uh, 
no, that's a parenthesis, yeah. I wrote ugly, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, negative 1.12 times 10 to the 4, x. That's just like a, it's like a, a small number, yeah. Times, it's a big number, times 10 to the 4, x, plus 26.8. This is an example, right? This is an example of what you're going to get on the test. It'll be a graph that'll look like that, yeah. You can kind of see it. This will be in your book, an example like that. Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to get on your exam. Notice that the x and y axis, right, yeah. what their units are. Mm -hmm. In the same way, remember I said keep track of them with the integrated rate laws, you need to keep track of them as, as well here. Okay, so you begin with a graph like this, and then they give you uh, an equation for it. So then this is our slope, right? So our negative 1.12 times 10 to the 4. Okay, so then that's going to equal, so this is our y equals mx plus b, right? And we said that m is activation energy over r. So we're going to make our negative 1.12 times 10 to the 4. We're going to make that equal to our negative activation energy over we know what R is. It's uh, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Right. So then this is called for activation energy? Right. So they'll ask you, like, what is your activation energy, for example, for that question? Mm -hmm. You know your slope, you know the equation for your, uh, your slope from the Lagrange form of the Arrhenius equation. So activation energy over R, and the slope for activation energy. Yeah, so the big thing is that whatever your slope is, and the other ones, we could just say, that's my k, right? Mm -hmm. But the only extra step is that if you want to solve for Ea, you do have to multiply both sides by the r. Does that make sense? Yeah? That's the, it's like an extra step, right? Don't forget that, right? Um, and then if I wanted to know the, the A, which is what? Your frequency factor? You would need to get, it would be this guy, 26.8, right? Mm -hmm. But then you would set that equal to ln of A. Them. Right, because yeah. this, yeah. right? this is our B, right? It's the yeah. same thing as this expression. Yeah. Yeah. So we, so have to we, we yeah. just make it equal to each other. Mm. And then how do you get rid of the ln? The uh, e. Raise it to the e power, right? right? Yeah. I mean, yes. I'm getting lost in the setup at the top. Right here? Yeah, yeah, like all all that. Like. Okay, so we said R, we said this was our slope, right? The slope, right okay. This is our slope. Is there an M figured out or? or it'll, be given. Given. it'll be given. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Or if it's not, what can you do? Y2 minus Y1, X2 over is X1, right? Yeah. You can solve it. It's linear. You can do it. Yeah. yeah. So we said this is our slope, right? Okay. And we said that our slope and our Arrhenius equation is equal to activation energy over R. The slope is equal to this? Yeah. Okay. So it's right here. So this is M. So we just make them equal to each other. So we multiply both sides by r, cancel out r, mm -hmm. right? And that equals our activation energy. Okay. You see the extra step? It's kind of subtle, but it's there, right? And you need to remember that last step, right? Because it's really easy, like if it's a multiple choice question, right, yeah. you know they're gonna put that as one of the answers. It's gonna be a. <laughs> so you're gonna be like, oh, I remembered it, it's a slope. That, it's gonna be, and you're gonna get caught. So that yeah. activation yeah. energy will be negative? Uh, in this case, well, no, right? No, because look, this is negative. This is negative. See that guy? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Right? You so see how it's set it equal to that? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's subtle, too. So they're both well. negative and they cancel out. Yeah. Right. Speaking of the extra step, steps, there was one problem that Spencer did in class where instead of being ln k, it was log k. Yeah. And there was a conversion factor he used for that. Holy shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah there is. Did yeah. he do log? He, he, he's not, he's not, it's not too mean. And it's just like a number that you times by? Yeah, it? it's some stupid number. That's, like, it's a really good question. Like yeah. two point. I don't three. remember what it we're was. Ten minutes, we're going to go ten minutes into three, yeah. Because we started ten minutes late. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, do you, any of you guys remember that, that constant you have to multiply by? Mm -hmm. What is it? One to it, x to the x. No, yeah. That's a great, that's a great question. I don't know, I can't remember if it's chapter 14, but he breaks up. Is that yeah, it is. Yeah. So then, um, okay. So then, we had this general form here, right? K is equal to a. Right. Okay. 
Well then, this guy here, I can expand it to P and Z. So the full form of this equation is PZ e to the negative EA over RT, which is horrible, right? And you're not gonna get any questions really concerning the numbers from this, mm -hmm. but you should know what they represent, meaning collision factor and so on, right? So I'd recommend then reading in the book on that section, right? Because as much as we want to like teach you guys this, but I think you are, are, we're probably better off as showing you how to do problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd say read the book on it. What is it? Oh, so then in see how this is this formula right here? Uh huh. You could actually break open up a. A is actually equal to p and z. Right. That, yeah. So that's a, that's something you learn later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but you don't have to you don't have to worry about the numbers though. Okay. It's just that the, this these this a is determined by two other variables. Okay. Is that cool? That's basically what it's. Saying. What. I will tell you though is that I want you to realize that what's the, what should this write if, if it was a, an algebra class where would they have you write they'd have you write this like this right if it's negative yeah do you see that because of the negative exponent right did you guys catch that yeah, yeah. so then yeah this is equal to k right so what does that mean that means that at high values of t meaning because we know that this is heavy, or the, the, the rate of a reaction is, is like really dependent on temperature, right? Right. Meaning if it gets hotter, the, usually the rate goes faster. Mm -hmm. We know that, right? Yeah. Yep. What this, say, what this is saying is that if you have a high T, right? If you divide by a really big number, what do you get? Small. Low. Zero, right? Like zero. Like, let's say this was infinity, right? Right. This would make this zero, right? That'd be A E to the zero. What's uh, any number raised to the zero power? One, right? So then that would be one. So the number, this expression right here, E, it oscillates between one and zero. Is that cool? Yeah. That's what they mean by, by oscillates between one and zero. So when you're learning about these constants, you should write down what they mean. I kind of wrote that down in my notes, meaning like you should know that, what is it? Stuff, like basically like the concepts of what they mean. Nothing crazy though, you know. You want to like like the that it oscillates between one and zero. The frequency factor represents a collision and so on. Right? Stuff like that you should know, right? And write it down in your cheat sheet. What else? Um, mechanisms, right? Is that, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, mechanisms. I yeah. think the ln to the log number is two point three oh three. Two point. Ah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Two point three oh three. So you multiply a log by that to get natural log, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think you'll encounter that. But all she's saying is that if you have a log, log of x, you want to make that natural log, right? You have to multiply it by 2.303. Oh. Yeah. That's what she's saying. Did you catch that? These are equivalent statements, yeah. She, it's, it's, I doubt it will be brought up in, in your lecture, but it might, and maybe you should write it down just in case, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, is that fine? Uh, where are those notes going? You have them, all right. <laughs> yeah, what's next? I almost want to go over activation energy instead of mechanisms. I think it's better to learn from mechanisms by doing problems. Okay. Yeah, activation energy though, it's, yeah, like we break, we have to do the graph for that. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll we'll be done with the lecture and we'll go into practice. Yeah, something like this, right? Like while he's racing, like the frequency factor represents the number of like wags, right? Didn't he say that in the lecture? Like the wags that get you to that activation barrier. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go over what activation barrier is right now, actually. Yeah. So, do you remember this stuff? Or no. Do you remember it or no? Huh? Like I did, I did the graph now. Yeah. Do you want to do this? Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See this graph? Yeah. So that you're gonna get one of these two, but it's gonna be easy. It'll be like label the parts of the graph. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It looks like really easy. If you see it, you're like, yes, I get it. But the, it'll also say, like, what's the... Uh, he said he wasn't going to get this out, though. He'll say, like, is it, like, endothermic or exothermic, yeah. right? Like, right. You can determine it from this. Yeah. Only the two can be touched, right? He said he wasn't going to... It'll be there. Some version of it will be there. Okay. Or you can you can uh, determine a lot from this, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah. All right, so... Like a positive degree. <laughs> it's really easy, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is like you'd be given a typical graph that looks like this, where you have your reactants and you have your products. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, what's called, you have your activation energy, right? And then you have your delta H. So it, it could either look like this. This is actually uh, this is actually exothermic, right? Yeah. Because this is the energy of a product here. Right, energy of a product is less than a reactant, right? Mm -hmm. Which means the energy was lost. Energy so, is lost. Because yeah. what? Well, what? If the sign of the delta H is <coughs> negative, it's what? Exothermic, right? Delta H is negative, that means exothermic, right? Right, so we can say this yeah. is like zero, right? This is zero. We can, say, we can say our activation energy was 100 joules, right, for example. We can say our delta H or kilojoules. We can say our delta H is negative 25 kilojoules. Mm -hmm. So it lost heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or energy, because it's a form of heat, right? Yeah. Um, <coughs> Uh, and then the activated complex, so the highest point on our activation energy, that is the energy required to um, reach transition, right? So when the reactants reach this phase, it's when... Uh, it's like they've like, remember, it's like that transition phase, essentially. Mm -hmm. Remember you guys learned about that? They're, they're improperly orientated to start to change, it, to go over to the other side. So the whole time they're trying to, or he has like the pens, right? And he puts them next to each other. Yeah, and he goes, and he says, <laughs> yeah, they're probably orientated at that point. Yeah, that's right. That would be transition phase, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all that means is that this whole time they're trying to orient correctly, right? Doing the pen, right? They're orientating correctly, they reach that perfect phase, right? Here. And that means now they can form and form products. So that's a transitionary phase. The activated complex, yeah. Can you replace the activation energy with a catalyst? With a catalyst? The catalyst, that's a good point. The catalyst is going to lower that graph. Okay. So we're going to get a different graph. That's all that means. Catalyst just makes it easier to reach that point, mm -hmm. meaning it, it, it'll, it'll, right. it'll align them in such a way that it's easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're hiding that from the opposite direction, right? So you're saying. Uh, yeah, uh, or better yet, what would a graph of an endothermic one look like? Or it wouldn't. It would, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Better yet, it wouldn't like. Would it, it wouldn't even be below. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So, yeah. so then, um, you should be able to label the major parts like that: reactants, right? Activated complex, your products, and also know be able to calculate your delta H. What would be the delta H of the reverse reaction? That's a question you're gonna get. What would it be? It would be this right. plus this, going the other way. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. If I'm going this way, this is the energy I need to get to that. Yeah. If I want to go backwards, I got to go all of this to get that. Okay. Yes. That's what that's what you're going to see. Yeah. It'd be 125 in this case. What would the question ask again? It'll say, what's the energy required in the reverse reaction? Oh, okay. So everything. It would be adding everything, all the components. All the components. Yeah. Okay. Would that be endothermic or exothermic? <laughs> If it went the other way, yeah, it'd be endothermic. Endothermic, right? Because if I look at it from this perspective, it would kind of look right like. Oh. That's the reverse of it. Oh. You see how I don't go underneath zero? It means oh. a positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. And it's always gonna be in kilojoules. Yeah, because joules are too small. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be like. So if there would be like joules. Eight hundred thousand joules. Like yeah. Convert that shit. That doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's not big. Okay. Just metric system stuff. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So mechanisms, I want to say that we should work on those as problems. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because it, me explaining them is not going to help. But <laughs> seeing them will help. Okay. So, uh, Worley, they, you have one of them email you the the notes and the problems we just said. Uh -huh. so. I emailed them to them. Yeah. Who came? Oh, okay. So that you have them, one of them email you the stuff, yeah. So make sure you pull this guy out, yeah? Or on the on, the, on your screens. This is the uh, the other file I sent you, yeah. 
all the page numbers correspond to the uh, yeah the, the, the number in the book that you find it under. Yeah. Uh, okay. I kind of want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you guys? Uh, we kind of went over twenty nine already, right? How uh, to solve for that? Yeah. What are you solving for? So, so twenty nine. We'll do it just in case, right? So we have a, a balanced reaction like this, right? And they tell us that the initial or the rate, the delta, they'll, they'll say this, the delta Cl2 over delta T is negative 0.012 molarity per second. And they said solve for the mol solve for the rate of the others. Right? So you just do our equation. We set these all equal to each other, right? So let's set it equal to that one. I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to let you do that by yourself. But you can see on here. So if we do that one, we set it equal. Delta Cl2. What's that? Any coefficient for Cl2? No, right? No. So we're not dividing it by any number. Right? And I'd set it equal to delta two. 1 mm -hmm. over 3. Are those not negative? No, they're on the same side. They're all going to be positive, yeah? Oh, okay. So don't worry about it. It's a convention to make it positive. Yeah, Hello. Yeah. don't don't worry about it. Yeah. So, um, okay. That means then, well, the rate of the reaction is positive. The rate of an individual, meaning this guy's always going to be negative. Would you agree? Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what you mean. Okay, yeah. So meaning, she said, the, my answer should be negative for this one, mm -hmm. which is true because they're both losing, right? Mm -hmm. This one should be positive. But I'm saying the overall reaction should be positive. Okay. That's my point, yeah. Okay, so we're solving for this one. I want to just multiply both sides by three. So cancel. Okay. So all I'm gonna do then is replace that. It's gonna be three times 0 0.012, negative, equals my rate of F. Is that fine? Mm -hmm. F2, whatever. So then you would do the same procedure, solving for the other one. Set it equal, and say it's going to be what? Dividing by 2. No biggie. Is that fun? Cool. You can find similar problems in the book around that area doing stuff like this. As well, I believe the first, the first question on the chapter review is this question. You can see another worked out version of that. Cool. Let's move on. Yeah. You have your answer direct for your article. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to do the next one? Does anyone have any questions on this one? That's all good, right? 100%. You got any 100%. Set them equal to each other, divide by the coefficient, and solve. Yeah? That's it. The units. Yeah. Although I feel like they can probably do that fast now. Now that they taught them the trick. Should we skip that one? Yeah. Do you guys know the, what's the units of a first order? First order? So that would be we, the yeah, only trick we use the trick the molarity mm -hmm. one yeah. minus the order, order right? Order. Yeah. So it'd be overall, one minus one. Overall order. Overall, right? Overall. Okay. But the overall in this case is one. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So it would be one minus one, Excellent. which is zero. So it's just gonna be s to the minus one. Excellent. I'm let you guys work on that one at home. Yeah, because it's almost waste time. Okay. So for thirty nine. Uh, this, you're gonna. This is gonna be on the test. So 39, it says um, A plus B plus C reacts to form plus, right? So there's first order in A, second order in B, and zero order in C. Does that make sense so far? Right? I just you set right, it up. First like order that? in A, second order in B, and zero order in C. Yep. Cool. Okay. So then, okay. So that's that answers number that answers part A. So it's what, right the rate law. So if it's zero order, we don't have to include it. So it's it's okay if we omit it. Um, and if you leave it, it's still the same thing. Yeah, as long as you put zero, right? No big. There's not going to affect it. Okay. Then and then part B says, what is the overall rate? So I mean, yeah. So then we have rate. A. 
right? So what is our overall rate? Mm -hmm. Three, right? So it's one plus two. So it's three. Three overall, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for B, just by what factor does the reaction rate change if A is double? The divisions remain constant. Plus A. Right. So This is A is double, right? <coughs> so I doubled A, and this is B is constant, so it's times one. Mm -hmm. Right? One to the power of two is one, right? Yep. Right. And then um, two to the power of one is two. Mm. Right, this doubles. I'm gonna send you guys all this book right now. So you can look at the book. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> look at the PDF. <laughs> so you gonna come in a moment. Alright, for part. Part B, it says, <clears throat> by what factors of reaction rate change if B is double? Right, so if B is double, Is this B is double? I just sent B a text up to everybody. Right, so B is doubled, right? Huh? What were you just saying? Nothing. Mm -hmm. And then A is constant. <laughs> so then 2 to the power of 2 is what? 4. 4. So our rate. So now it says by what factors the rate change if C is double. And then it's main constant. If you forwarded the text to somebody, Forward the email I just sent you to someone else as well. So I can, you, can, you can open the book and see it. All right, so I said, what if the power of C is double, right? <coughs> and the other ones remain constant. So one to the power of one is one, right? One yeah. to the power of two is one. So this times that is one. That times this, what's two to the power of zero? It's one. Mm. All right, so our rate. What number are you holding? This is number 39. Yeah. All right. Okay, now for the last part, it says, by what factors the reaction change of all concentrations are doubled? Good. Okay, so 2 to the power of 1 is what? Two, right? Two to the power of two? Four. Two times four? Eight. Eight, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so strange. Because two to the power of zero is one, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just one. So one times eight is eight. So the key is that some people would probably add instead for some reason, yeah? So, yeah. so the option six would be there, but you have to multiply all these. Because if you write it like that, they're all multiplication. They're all, all multiplication. So that's why it's really good. It's a really good way to do it. The so, multiplier. Yeah, multiplier. So we're saying okay. that the, the rate increases by two no. for each one. I mean, sorry, the concentration increases by two for each one. Yeah. And what was it asking you? What was the... So it said, if all of these concentrations are doubled, by what factors does your rate increase? Okay. What factors does your rate increase? Yes. Okay. Anyway, what happens to your rate? Eight. Uh, yeah. It increases eightfold. Uh-huh. Yeah. Eightfold. <laughs> 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 all right. So that's that one. Cool. Does that one make sense, right? Yep. Plug it into your handy equation, solve for the effect on the rate. Cool. Okay. Oh, all right. So, 45. I'm going to skip the other one because I think you guys can do the one solving because we did that one a little bit and then we did it. Mm -hmm. So, 45. No, these are, these are textbooks.
I, we, we pulled some textbook questions. Yeah. Do you guys see 45? 45. Yeah. And if you can open the book, go to 14 and uh, 15 and go to 45. This one's more reading than anything, but this is what you're going to see on a multiple choice test. Yeah. So the 45 says, um, I want you to indicate the order of the reaction, right? So the order of the reaction. And part A says, you find that you, you plot the concentration of the reactant versus time, and you yield a straight line. The concentration versus time, and you yield a straight line. So concentration is what, just A, right? Versus time, T, and you yield a straight line. So we're gonna assume it's like downwards, right? What order is that? Zero. Zero, right? So this is, what, I like this question because it makes you remember the axes, yeah? Yeah. So if you know the graphs, it makes you remember the axes, so you can remember the order. So this one must be zero order, yeah? Part B, the reaction has half-life that is independent of initial concentration. Okay. First order. First order. That'd be first, right? Yeah, so independent of concentration. So if you remember our half-life formulas, right? The T of one half of a first, right? Is the 0 0.693 over K, right? And as, it can, as you can see, there is not any section here for initial concentration. Yeah. Our second order does have that, right? It's what? What is it? Second order? One over A not K. Right? Which uh, would be dependent on our initial concentration. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this, these are different ways of them asking you how to determine the order. Okay? So yeah, so if it's independent of concentration, initial concentration, it's going to be our first order. Mm -hmm. Numbers, so, so C, the plot of the inverse of the concentration versus time yields a straight line. So what's the inverse of a number? It's one over that number, right? Yes. Right. So inverse of a concentration would be one over A. Graph yields a straight line. What order is that? Second. These are really good questions, right? Because they make you remember the order and what the graphs look like. So how come you decided it was a zero um, rather than a one on this? So the first one says the plot of a con con the plot of a concentration versus time. Yeah. What would they? What would it? What would the graph look like in words for a first order? The plot of the natural log of concentration natural versus time. Is oh, that's what that would be, that's right? One. That's that's second order, or first order. Whatever, yeah? First order. So then, because it just says concentration, it must just be concentration. Oh. If my if the question said the plot of the natural log of concentration oh. versus time, that would be first order. Mm -hmm. So that's really subtle, but it's yeah. but it's good though. Yeah. <coughs> cool. Well, Moving on. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then that's number forty-five in the textbook. Number forty-five in the kinetics chapter. On page six fifty-five. Yeah. Next one. Yeah. This one's long. Yeah. Yeah. So the graphing one. That's why I wanted them to. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, 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 huh? Oh, since they have it in front of them, uh -huh. they can just say, "I have to do this one." Mm -hmm. So, do you guys see uh, what number is this? Forty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we just did, right? Uh, forty-seven. No, that's the next one. That's oh, next one. We, 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 I that's think we grabbed this from the third edition. Oh, okay. Let me double check and see what number it corresponds to in the book. Yeah. I think it's forty-nine. Uh, the one with the, uh, it says the tabulated data shows a concentration of AB versus time. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so yeah, so look at 49 in the book, yeah, mm -hmm. if you have it in front of you. It's going to give you uh, a column that uh, tells you AB. So if you see the solution for this one, what I did first was I, I plotted what AB would look like, or right, I plotted the, what, the, what the graphs would look like if I got the natural log of it, mm -hmm. or if I did one over it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what it was going to be ahead of time. So all I did was, I plotted them. Whatever one produced a straight line, that's my order, right? So I plotted the first one, um, the natural log of AB, and you get a curve, which means it's not the one we want. Okay. We want straight lines, right? I plotted the inverse of the concentration, and I got a straight line, which means it must be, in that case, second order. Cool? This one's kind of hard to show on the board unless we plot 80 points here. I don't want to do that. <laughs> So I encourage you to do that problem on your own. Make sure you're comfortable with your calculator doing natural logs, so you can get those points. Yeah. Um, what's the second? Is there anything else to that question or no? 
Yeah. yeah. So then it says predict the order of the reaction and the value of the rate constant of the. I'm predict, yeah. So that, this is actually a really good question because they actually do a lot of things. Uh, 49 in the book. 49. Determine the order of the reaction and the value of K. Also predict the concentration after 25 seconds. So we did all that work, right? And we plotted all those points and we found out it was a second order. So that's what you write down, right? So second order. So our overall rate is equal to what? Is it AB? Yeah, or yeah, AB two. Cool. That's our rate order for this. Now we're just gonna solve for sorry. Okay. We get us off for that. Is that fun? So just like how you did before, you can pick any column and plug it in, right? And solve for k. Is that fun? So we can pick the rate at the rate at zero. No, but not zero. I guess we could pick. Oh, it's forty-seven in the new version. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. In this case, yeah. Well, I think it's uh, forty-nine in the, the newest book. Or is it? Do you have the new book? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever book I sent you is forty-nine. Yeah, so you would pick any of the concentrations there, right? So and you can solve for rate. Boop, 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 boop. What else is there? We can use our integrated rate law as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we said this was second, right? Second order, right? We write the second order rate law for that. That would be one over A. Yes, so that's the, this, this one takes a while at home. Okay. Plot some points, use Excel, right? Yeah. Get a graph, right? Yes. Wait, can you repeat as to how you got second order again? Yeah, so you kind of see it. I, um, I plotted a crap ton of points. Oh, <laughs> that's why. And I found out I got a straight line when I did that one. Okay. Gotcha. So it must be second order. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, just take some time. Maybe he'll give you like four points or something. That'd be nice. <laughs> not, maybe not 16, you yeah, know, whatever it is. <laughs> So then um, I know it's second order, so this is gonna be the equation I'm gonna use, yeah? Yeah, and I wanna solve for T, because I wanna solve for the, I wanna solve for, rather for K, right? I wanna solve for that. So a little bit of algebra, be one over A at time T, minus that, one over A, not, we're gonna divide by T, and that's equal to K. Does that make sense for everybody? I wanna solve for K, so I brought this over to the other side. And then I divide it by, uh, by, by t to solve for k. Okay. So this is the algebra you're going to have to do, the, the extent of the algebra you'll do in this class, dividing things and so on. So then I can just pick any points I want here and plug them in and solve for k. So we can plug in, I think I plugged in the values at 25 seconds. Yeah. Or no, no. I plugged in the values at, <clears throat> which one did I use? Yeah, 2.71a. And what else? And initial, right? I used the first, I used 50 and zero. Time equals 50 and zero. Right. Is that cool? Do you guys see that on the paper? Yeah. yeah. So um, one over AB was equal to, or one over the initial concentration was 1.052. And this one I found out was 2.178. So you took one over yeah. These are the numbers I got from my graph, yeah. Oh, okay. Right? And then my, uh, my initial, or, or this, this one right here was, 1.052, and I put it over, in this case, 50 seconds, yeah? Cool. I solve for k. So like my k value must be 0, 2, 2, 5, 2. Polarity per second is 7, 8, minus 1. Cool. Now that you solved your k value, you can plug it in for here. And you can use that k now to solve at any time what this one's going to be. That's the value of this, right? What um, number did you use again? Oh, um, so I used the first two points on the graph. First two points. Yeah, so I got the natural log here. So or rather, this one right here. I used, I used the, at 50 seconds, I was able to find out I, that it would be 2.178. That would be, and I subtracted it from that. So what I should put here is, I'm going to put uh, t at 50 and T initial. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put T at 50. Mm -hmm. So I, I, whatever number you get on your graph, you can pick any two points and get your K. That's fine. And this, this guy on book gave me a first order. Oh, that sucks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so does that make sense? So now that we have our K value there, we can solve it, we can put it in here, right? 
and we can change our equation to solve it for at 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's all we're going to do. Okay. Right? So then in this case, um, it'd be 1 over A at 25 seconds. My K value I found to be this, 0, 2, 2, 5, 2. Right? Multiplied by my time at what time? 25 seconds, right? 25 seconds, right? And I, multi I add 1 over A initial, which when I plotted it, I found out it was 1.052. And then we can solve. Whatever that answer is, it turned out to be, in this case, well, 1 over A. Is that fun? You're not done, you need to get the reciprocal, right? To mm -hmm. solve for it, you gotta flip it up. So A, when you do that, you, multi you raise both sides to minus one. Whatever way you wanna solve for it. You could have just multiplied up and divided down, whatever way you want. And A, at 25 seconds, that gives you 0 0.618 molar. This is kinda lengthy, right? Mm -hmm. This is like the worst case scenario on the back of the mm -hmm. test. <laughs> yeah. Worst case scenario, he makes you solve for the order, right? Once you get the order, you can solve for k by moving the equation around and solving for k. We get a number for k, and then we can use the integrated rate law and solve for any concentration at any time. You can also solve for k by using the slope. Yeah, that too. Is that how you did it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you're you're smart, you could have just used the slope. <laughs> uh, I think I did a really shitty job plotting it, so I didn't trust my slope. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> was like um, it looks like a straight line to me, so it must be in the second order. Yeah. What concentration does the book give you for uh, at zero? Time zero? Well, you have to get one over that concentration. 0.950? Yeah. Uh -huh. 0 0.95. 0 0.95. That would be A B though. Yeah. So that's so like one point oh five. Yeah. Two. But if you put one over 0 0.95, what you get is you run this one point zero five two. Okay, you run it, just left it up. Does this part make sense? The procedure is kind of long, but it, it goes. You go through it, and it may, eventually will give you an answer. The key is solving for k. You need to find a way to solve for k. Cool. Graphing wise, time goes in the bottom, concentration goes in the left, on the y-axis. Well, which one? Okay, so if you wanted to, yeah. So if you wanted to graph for a zero order, what's your y-axis? For a zero? For a zero. 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 Yeah. Just the concentration. Just the concentration, right? And if you get a curve, eh, that's not the answer, right? Yeah. If you want to get it for uh, first order, what do you do? Whatever. What's your y axis? Whatever. Whatever. Wrong. Whatever. Whatever. Natural log. Yeah, <laughs> Natural log. Write that in Chi Chi. Yeah. <laughs> Chi -chi. Natural log of A is your y axis, yeah? Okay. If you want to get Natural it for a second order to prove it's that one, yeah, that's one, one over. Well, it's one over A, yeah? <laughs> Don't assume, right? I mean, you can kind of guess. Hopefully, you're lucky. Otherwise, you're gonna apply like three different graphs. It's kind of pain. Yeah. So just maybe use your best. You know, <laughs> it's probably not gonna be zero. So you, 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 you maybe do that last. Yeah. I'd probably say yeah. And you could probably graph just a few points instead of all like. Yeah, because it's linear. Years. The two points should be pretty like pretty. You know, yeah. say that? because it's linear, so you might but get lucky. Three points down. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. And if it's a curve you said, that's not good. If you ever get a curve when you're graphing, it's not right. Okay. It's not right. <laughs> Curves are not fun. Unless you feel like doing derivatives, and then you can do that. Yeah? You can get the instantaneous. You know, so then you can move on, yeah. <laughs> you actually, yeah. Cool. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one's really good. It's um, solving for K and solving for order. Um, yeah, you want to do that one? Or, yeah. <laughs> you want to make sure it's the same. Oh, 53. Yeah. Let me see if it's the same. Let me see if it's in the book here. Okay, so if you have the book in front of you, the the, the number is 55 instead of 53. 55. Well, mine, I think I put 55. Because I used the, I used the third edition. So I used the third edition. So. Um, SO, SO2 CL2. See that? 
So in your book it's 53? Yeah. Cool. So if you have the book that we just sent in front of you, it's 55. You can see it if you want to see it. What number is this on the note? Um, 53. Because um, I use the, the old edition because I'm cheap. <laughs> I bought it for $10. <laughs> cool. They were That's selling it for 20. Huh? They were selling it for 20. Which one? Um, the new edition. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm stubborn as well. Stubborn. <laughs> 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 the book? Yeah. Um, I can kind of get you drawing. Oh, no, I have my own book, the old edition. I like it. I like my old edition. It's got <laughs> notes. <laughs> it's got notes. Okay. okay. All right, so for this problem, it says like the decomposition of a certain compound is first order. Then it says that uh, our rate constant is 1.42 times 10 to the negative 4. Mm -hmm. okay. So it says, for part A, it says, what is a half-life? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's our half-life for first, what's the half-life we're taking for first order? 0.9. It's the natural log of 2. Natural log of 2, over here. You get more sig figs if you do it my way, but I guess we're going to do it my way. We know our key, right? Yep. Yeah. 0.42 times 10 to the negative 4, so we just plug that in. Would you guys prefer if like lecture was on the board as opposed to be on a PowerPoint? Yeah. 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 I wish he would raise the thing. He, he, he does it. Like, like, <laughs> he has like, like this is right here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's like, yeah. It's like, all right, guys, we're going to do a workshop. I'm going to open this. I'm going to contain it to right here. It's <laughs> 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 like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, okay, we'll do that. And he's like, yeah. Oh, okay, we'll do that. He recommended it. But yeah, Alex told him. Yeah. Oh, really? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he never did it. I thought I, I really <laughs> hate like, PowerPoints. So, that. like, when I was doing that little mini lecture, I, I hated it. Yeah. yeah. I hate that shit. Yeah. 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 So it's like. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, for what? No, he, he, he complains about it. Himself, he complains he about the PowerPoints. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. He laughs. He does use the board and he's good. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. So we talked about our half life, right? Yeah. Okay. So for part B, it says. Oh, this is really good. This is really subtle, the difference between these two. We should show them the difference from this. Okay, so for B, it says, how long does it take to decrease to 25% of the solution? So our half-life, what does that represent? How much uh, of it has decomposed? Decrease 50%? Right, 50%. So 25% is... It'd be half of that? No, it'd be twice, twice. that. Yeah. Wait. Why? Because it takes 4,800 4, seconds to reach half-life, right? Oh, 50%? Yeah. It's going to take another 4,800 seconds to reach half of that. So we multiply by two. Can I show you a different way too, just in case you forget? Yeah. yeah. You want to do it the other way too? No, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wait. So let's say you, you didn't know they do that, right? Because that's like, well, Kane's really smart, so he does. <laughs> <He's really smart. laughs> I didn't even do that when I did that. Yeah. So I was like, I used the. It told me it was a first order, right? So I used the first order reaction. So it's natural log, right? Um, there's a, there's a secondary form of it. That's a. Um, is it time t? Yeah. Over a initial. Right? Remember that. Yeah. That's the secondary form of the first order reaction, right? Oh. So if I know that it's there's only 25% left, right? That would mean that the ratio of these concentrations is what? One fourth. LNN of 0.25, right? right? That's one fourth. Mm -hmm. Or if you prefer fractions, yeah. So it's that's LN of one over four. Because mm -hmm. there's only 25% left. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So then you can just um, if I wanted to solve for T. I would just divide by what? By k, right? Negative four, so what's the negative k? So I use this reaction instead. I found that to be a little easier for me, but that's, 
I didn't even realize that was an option until you said that, honestly. <laughs> Can you go over that? Oh, because it's okay. too, too yeah. 25. Yeah. Right, this is a times two for 25. This is a times for one half life, right? Two. Two. So 25% is another half life, right? Oh, so it's going to take, so it's going to be two of those. Half right. Two yeah, exactly. 25. Yeah. Because if it was of 25, then it would be half of the 40. So, like, if because it'd be uh, 75%? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if it said okay. to decrease, it, this is very subtle. The difference between two and by. Mm -hmm. So if this was by twenty or by twenty five percent, you know, yeah. what would the number be? Then it would point seven by, right? Yeah. So that's very subtle. Okay. <laughs> that's like okay. people fuck that up all the time. Yeah. So be to, to decrease by twenty five percent versus two twenty five percent. So will it ever ask us like how long to decrease to thirty percent where we can't really use it? That's what I, that's what I'm saying. So oh, that's so your option here. Okay. That's where you use this, right? Okay. So let's let's make it easier, right? So let's say, what if we wanted to increase by to decrease to what what number? Forty seven percent, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you do that, right? You would have to put point four seven, right? Perfect. So but to decrease to forty seven percent would be point four seven. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Do you see why that, but so this is super good, it's quick, gone, right? It's your multiple choice question, get it right, boom. Yeah. Two versus two. Two versus by. You want to copy it? Yeah. Oh, it's just, just this one here. Mm-hmm. It's good, I like we have different ways of doing it, right? Nice. Yeah. Cool if we erase A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, A, and then we'll go to the zero right next to it. Yeah. Did 0.69 say it was radical? I thought it that's a constant for a half life of first order. Yep. Yeah. Zero and two have a constant as well? Oh, uh, the zero have a constant? Huh? Zero of uh, the zero order? Um, they use the initial concentration. It's, uh, I think it's you know, two times the initial over K, I believe. I have the derivations here if you want to see them. I can show you how to do it. Initial over two, right? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and this is like exactly what you're going to see on the test, by the way. Like all of these questions on this? The, the ones we picked, at least, are going to be what you see. Okay. This type of question, which is why we thought they were good. This one in particular is like what? The one in the back, probably, right? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like the multiple questions in one? Yeah, okay. it'll give you like the, it'll be A, B, C, D, oh, yeah. you know, D. And it'll be like, it's the order given, you solve for the half-life, yeah. and you use the half-life to solve for other things, yeah? Right. So that's why this is a, a good question, because it has multiple parts. Okay, so for part C, it says if our initial concentration is one, how long will it take to decrease to 0.78? Right, so it's the first order, which means I'm gonna use my integrator, right, because we're having a change in concentration. We're going to do ln of a here. Right, so our, our initial is 1, right? Let's plug it in. And our um, final is going to be 0.78. Right. Or if you don't like this one, you can use this equation. Okay. They do the same thing. Yeah. What's the natural log of 1? Oh, it's a. Um, Zero. Right. Zero. So that goes away, which is nice. Okay. Do you see why it's 0.78? Yeah. Because it would just get away. It would just go away. And we never caused oh. it, right? Yeah. Showing the steps, step by step. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's like it's nice. Everybody's just like, oh, oh, blows their mind. Like, oh, natural log one. Wait, can I erase it? Yeah. Natural log of one. Right. So we said this was zero. Oh. Okay. So we have ln of 0.78 equals our constant. There, because this number 1.42 times 784 times t. So that multiplies by k, our constant. Isolate my 
Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it, it seems easy, but like it's because we're all like in a nice room and yeah. chilling for like yeah. two hours, but like you're on a test. And also, you're going to have equilibrium on this on top of it, too. So, yeah, that's a lot to keep track of. For maybe next time, <laughs> you can maybe mix up equilibrium and kinetics. And yeah, right, like juxtapose them. But the thing is, I mean, I don't know if you guys, would you guys prefer a dedicated equilibrium workshop next? Or? Yeah. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I guess we could do kinetics, put like a little bit of everything here. Maybe like fresh for us one night. Or just to keep us on our toes. Keep you guys on your toes. I encourage you guys to like do the uh, problems in the, have you guys done all of the review problems yet? So you guys, you, you guys should finish them this weekend yeah. for this chapter, right? That's your homework, right? Complete all of the review for this weekend. So then you, when you come in, you're not worrying about kinetics when you're learning about equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Don't put that on yourself, right? It's horrible. Equilibrium doesn't seem that hard. It's not hard, yeah. But when you, have you guys have touched on ice tables yet? Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's not too bad. Nice. What about Le Chalier's principle? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A more conceptual. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Ice tables can be a pain for some people, yeah. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. but we can. We did like really basic ones. So. Yeah, it's not as, yeah, I guess it's more yeah. difficult than that, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you just did like fill it in the iron plus the nickel. Yeah, we're gonna be doing ice tables for the rest of the semester. So everyone copy that <laughs> first. <laughs> Get used yeah. to that, yeah. <laughs> They'll stay. Since the first order, we use the same equation again. Ln of a c equals negative a c and a one. Okay. <coughs> so we're trying to find initial conservation, right? So we're trying to find this one. So that's our x. Um, we're we know our k, right? Which is uh, that our initial is 0.150. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still remember the point five? Which way you set it? Oh, two separate way. questions, it's 200. It's saying like, what will we be after 200 oh. seconds? How about 500 seconds? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, and since we solve for our concentration, we just take E, of, we just e both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Um, make sure you can do it on your calculator as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you want, what you can do is multiply all those things, right? First, you get the answer there, mm -hmm. hit answer, and then raise it to the E power. Do, do that if you kind of suck at the parentheses, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, yeah, compute that and then raise it to the E power. So That's point, like a tip. Point one four five. Yeah. So at 200 seconds, Concentration at 200 seconds. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I got for you. 147577. Seven. You can do it. Can we do it? Yeah, I, I got it. 500 seconds. For sure, but essentially it's the same thing, right? Yeah, so what do we get? The only thing that changes is what? Is our 500 time? right there? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you actually keep it as variables instead, you've got to plug them in at the end. 
That's a, mm -hmm. Some people don't like so variables, though. Yeah, yeah so it's like, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's the exact same thing. You just, our time is changing. So yep. 500 changes, boom. And then you get an answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, so you get a 0 0.13971. 0 0.139. Or 0 0.140, whatever you want. <coughs> Uh, which one? This one? That's this is integrated. Point. That's the integrated yeah. rate. Yeah. 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 Of first order. Like, yeah. 0.14. Yeah. Did we do this wrong? Because we got 0.145. Uh, it's no biggie. It's, we might have had slightly oh, different sig figs. Yeah. 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 Nah, it's, it's close enough. Oh, yeah. Plus or minus <laughs> point three or something like that. Yeah, whatever. It's like <laughs> point three. Okay. Yeah, you're good. As long as you know what the right step is. Yeah. Everything should be the same. Yeah. We probably rounded at different points. What was the answer for the 200 second one? 200 seconds, it was 0. 0.146. 0. 0.146? Yeah. If you get an answer around that area, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's all it means. Can I erase this? <laughs> What's that? Point one four six. That's for two hundred seconds. If it's like really off, that means you're probably inputting something wrong. I'll plug in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, is that an error? Is that <laughs> Input it wrong. So oh yeah. So, so do that thing I said. So equation. Do all of this yeah, first. So it's the same equation. Right you're just changing <laughs> that. Yeah. Never mind then. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Okay. Probably a parentheses in the wrong spot. Yeah, I think so. So it should be uh, negative parentheses and parentheses, parentheses. Negative. Enter that and then plus that. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Make your life easy. Yeah, make your life easy. Make your life easy. It's like. Okay. Can I erase this? Yeah. Is there another part of this question? Oh, no, wait, for this question, it's it. Okay, cool. Did I get the uranium one? <laughs> nice. Alright. So, for, if you have the book in front of you, it's number 57. The, ha the half life of a radioactive, um, yeah, so you determine the age of the universe. Yeah, I love the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the question says it, it should say the half life of a radioactive decay of. Yeah. Yeah. Of, uh, no, I should say of uranium two thirty eight. Look for the question that says uranium two thirty eight. Yeah. Fifty seven. Fifty seven in the one I sent you guys. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, the half life of it is four point five billion years. The key here it says it's independent of initial concentration. So which one is it then? First order. First order, right? What? So the, the, you should be highlighting independent of concentration. Um, so that means half -life its half-life is first order. Because it right. has any concentration, so it's like an eight zero right there. Oh, you're right. So this one only has... It's just the 0.693 that I sent you. Okay. Oh, the half-life. Okay. Uh, okay. Independent. So that means first order. But it's just... Oh, okay. Just oh, what that means. Okay. okay, so then if it's first order, we know our equations we're going to use. We're going to use the uh, natural log, right, of A and C equals negative KC plus the natural log. Uh, we also have our half-life equation. We're gonna use that to solve for K in this particular case, right? Yep. So that's gonna be the, uh, um, well, let's, let's rearrange it. So let's divide by T and K, right, and multiply, right? So that would be K is equal to 0 0.693 over T. Yep. Cool, All right, so this is our way of solving for K. If you have a half-life equation, you're usually going to use it to see this. So they tell us that our half-life of that is independent. How long for 10%? Oh, no, they tell us it's 4.5 billion years. Yep. So they tell us that T is 4.5 billion years. So instead of writing 4.5 times 10 to the you know, 8, just keep it as 4.5. So all of our time units will be in terms of billion. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's just keep it so 0 0.6. You could absolutely keep it in terms of giant ass numbers if you want, but it's fine. 4.5. And that's our K value. Cool. And you got you solve for that, and you should get uh, 0 0.154. And that's going to be K, yeah? It's 
now asking us to solve for it. Um, so how long for 10% of a sample to decay? So if it's 10% decays, how much do I have left? 90%, right? 90%, right? So then when I plug in here, my that over that is gonna be 90, 0.9, right? So, okay. Now I have my k value, so it's the natural log. I'm just gonna subtract it to the other side. Right, I have my k, I'm gonna divide by k on both sides. So I'm gonna still divide by k, and I'm gonna get time. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Mm. Tracking things over. We're using the rule of logs in this case, yeah, right? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. No, right. <laughs> ln of a minus ln of b. We can we can get the uh, ln of a over b. Yeah. Is that okay? That's just the rule of logs. Okay. So that, that's it makes your life a lot easier. But if you want, if you like the way that uh, Joaquin did it, um, in this particular case, since the initial concentration is one, ln of one is zero. Right, and if, if it's 0.9 left, then this is just 0.9. Whatever way you want to do it, this is fine. Yeah. So then I'm going to replace this ratio with the natural log of 0 0.9 over my k value, which is this. Let's solve for t. Our t is 0 0.684, which we attach the units of billion years to it, okay? Billion years. <clears throat> that's how long it takes for 10% to decay, which makes about sense, right? Because if it's 40, 4, 4 billion years for 50%, if we get rid of 10, it's about a little bit less than 1 billion years. So our answer kind of makes sense in the realm of the scheme of things. Yeah. Um, and then it's asking us <clears throat> if a sample contained this many atoms um, when it was formed. Uh, which was 1.5 times 10 to the 18, which is less than a mole of atoms, how much would be left after 13.8 billion years, right? So you have a couple options. I'm, I was kind of extra and I used the, I converted it to moles for some reason. I don't know why I did that. Yeah, you don't need to do that. Sorry. Did it ask for atoms? It said, yeah, I think I thought mole atoms. So I decided to do that, so. And I thought molarity, because these, these are in terms of concentration. Yeah. So I was like, well, if I assume one liter, it's molar <laughs> that's it's the molarity, yeah. So <laughs> I say I put it assume one liter question yeah. mark. So, so. <laughs> so that's super extra. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. Can you reread the the yeah. question? Yeah. So does everything up to this point make sense? Yeah. We just solved for the time to for ten percent to go away. The second part is saying if a sample of uranium contained one point five times ten to the eighteen <coughs> atoms, how many exist after thirteen point eight billion years? So all, it's, all it's saying is, if you started with X, how much is left after 13.8 billion years? That's all it's saying. Okay. Will I erase this part? No. Get rid of it. Ugh. I don't know why I converted it to moles. Don't convert it to moles. You don't need to do that. <laughs> so I'm asking for, I'm using the integrated rate law again. So it's ln of A at time 13.8 billion. Right? That's what that is. And my KT, well, my net, my K, we found out was, I erased it, that was <laughs> negative 0.684, right? Our time is 13.8 billion, right? For reference, I'm using the natural, the, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just plugging in the dots, filling in the dots, yeah? And um, so that's gonna be 13.8. And you can add just the atoms that we have here. Don't convert to moles. So that's just, uh, what was it? What was it called? Mole? Uh, 1.5. 1.5 times 10 to the 8. 10 to the 8. Oh. Plug that in. Whatever your answer is there, I raised both sides to the e power, right? Can you set that out? So I raised that to the e, so the natural log goes away. So I'm just looking for a. Question's kind of cool. And then you find out you have, let's see, 1.8, 10 to the 17 atoms. Does that make sense? Did you get that? 1.8 times 10 to 17? Did you do that one or no? No. 
<laughs> you didn't do that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I checked, I checked the back of the book. That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1.8 times 10 to the 17 atoms remaining. Yeah, so then it's just a plug and chug, right? It's a different form of the question we've been asking already, right? Okay. If you uh, know the K value, you can solve for everything, which is the utility of, this que of, the, of the K and the integrated rate law. Question? Oh, it's natural law, sorry. Yeah, okay. My bad. Yeah, I didn't write that explicitly. That should be ln of that. Apologize, yeah. Is that fine? Yeah, so then, um, yeah, I, I converted it to moles, and then I, after the fact, multiplied it by Avogadro's number to get atoms. Yeah, you don't need to do that. <coughs> What's next? Activation energy, right? Or do that one, 61? Uh, is that 61? I got 58. It says uh, activation energy of a reactor. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's a good question. If you're if you're able to stay, we're gonna do number sixty-one on the, in the book. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I gotta set it up wow. a top yeah. Yeah. Or, geez. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Why are you cheating on me now? Wow. Bye. 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 Multiply by 9.0 to 10 to the 23rd. Oh, we got this number. Yeah. You gotta show the conversion. Yeah. Frequency factor, activation energy. Mm -hmm. Using this equation, right? Mm -hmm. 
Is there a frequency factor? That's a radius. That's a radius equation, yeah. yeah. Are you should, yeah. Lessons? Yeah, I mean, we, we're here. We're here actually here before and after your class. Like, we're available. Him and I are both. We work pretty much always hard. I can't do it like a day here, but I'm off on Mondays from 4 hours. So like Dude, Mondays, we're both here from 12 to 7. Okay, so I'm going to be a regular then. <laughs> yeah, dude, you should. Come by. Makes sense. Because last time I came at like 10 or no, 11. Or something, and you guys weren't there, mm -hmm. and I was like, like fucking fuck Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't get it. Um, uh, twelve to seven on Monday. Yeah, we'll be there. Him and I are both there. I could see them. Okay. So this is yeah. this is our, the equation we're using, right? Mm -hmm. So we're given activation energy. So activation energy was fifty-six point eight kilojoules. Yeah. Right, frequency factor. That's it. That was one point five times ten to the eleven. And then you want to know what K is. We're also given temperature, 24 degrees Celsius. Okay. And then, so we can't really use these right off the bat to plug into our equation. Because remember that our R, our constant, is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Which means that we have to convert this to joules. We have to convert this to Kelvin. Mm -hmm. It's gonna equal. I'm so bad on this. I would like write all the units and everything, and then when you see it, doesn't match up in my head. Like, yeah, what's going on? Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah, that's good. That's a good habit. I always write my units. I'm joking. I don't know that. I never write. I, li I literally didn't write my units. So I just converted my temperature to Kelvin, and then my uh, activation energy to joules. Mm -hmm. I just plug it in. Are we solving for A? No. Yeah. Oh. On the test, do you think he'll give us Celsius? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have to convert it? Or? I'm sorry? On the test, do you think that he'll give us Celsius and we have to convert it? Yeah. For sure, yeah, absolutely. Because Celsius is like way easier to understand, right? Yeah. Because uh, that's like room temperature, 25. Yeah. Room Yeah, so you just plug this into our equation. <laughs> it seems so easy when you guys do it, and then when I'm like on my own, I don't get You're it. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, what's another method they could ask this? They can give you A, they can give you K, and you can solve for A. It's a little bit of algebra to get that, right? Mm -hmm. What would you do? You just gotta divide a little bit. So in our case, it's 17 seconds. Or if they gave you this, that, that and that, you could solve for EA, right? So there's a little, that's a little bit more algebra, actually. You have to do natural logs to get rid of that. Right? Cool. <laughs> Roughly. So what are mechanisms? Uh, we should do one, yeah. yeah. And then we'll call it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, can we erase this? I also want to say that sometimes you're going to get orders like don't be super afraid if you get like some weird wacky orders. Yeah. Like, like if, square root of two. Yeah. So if you do it the way that Joaquin does it, right? Mm -hmm. Doing that way, oh, yeah, yeah. you will equal, always get it right. Set so, them equal to each other. Yeah, set them equal to each other and determine what number needs to give you that number. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. It will do it will it will work. It's just that sometimes you're gonna get wacky numbers. Mm -hmm. Right, so square work. root is just half. So yeah. if you get two n equals uh, sorry, four n equals two, it's n equals one. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can do the other mathematical way as well. Yeah. That's a little tedious though, honestly. Mm -hmm. Just one. Doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like Lisa. 
Do we have a particular mechanism problem that we did? Mm -hmm. No, we did seven, seven. We did, right? That's the yeah. CHL. Yeah. Did you get one half? Yeah. Uh, I was doing this one with Dieter earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't do it on mine. Yeah. Make sure you guys write this one down because we didn't, I didn't write that on mine. Number 77. Okay. Yeah. Did you do the Wayne Hill show earlier? Or no, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. to show this one first because it's like kind of weird because it has a Um, you're given this problem here, okay? So this is a mechanism, and the key of a mechanism is that um, these will overall add to give us our molecular equation, right? But we need to, like Hess's law, we need to get rid of intermediates. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes. So intermediates in this particular case, um, so this, this particular question, 77, asks us to get the overall reaction to determine the intermediates and then to get the order of the reaction. I should also indicate that this is fast and that's slow. Are okay. we always going to be given that information? Absolutely. You'll be given that. So um, you can do your rate first if you want, but let's get the overall reaction first, right? So the way we do that is we cancel any of the uh, intermediates. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, which one would cancel? Um. PCL3. Yeah, right. So this would, well, this is found on both left and right, right? Yeah, here? Mm -hmm. oh. So mm -hmm. CL would go away, right? Yeah. And that would eliminate one of, we'd have only one CL left. Oh. And then that CL? Yeah, and then this guy down here would mm -hmm. cancel yeah. and get rid of that guy. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anything else? PCL3. PCL3, right? So we have our this guy here and that one there. So our overall reaction should look like this. Should look like Cl2, right? Um, for with CH, CO3, yields, right? HCl plus CCl4. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. That's our overall reaction. But now we need to get our orders and well. Also, Part B says determine our intermediates, right? Well, in this particular case, these guys would be intermediates. Right? Mm -hmm. And so with these. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, how do we determine between a catalyst and an intermediate? Mm -hmm. That's important, right? Because sometimes you're going to get them and they're going to cancel, right? But the difference between a catalyst is, and an intermediate is really important. So uh, a catalyst we don't have a catalyst here, by the way. In the beginning, That's what, a catalyst, that's what a catalyst does. So it will get canceled in the reaction, right? It'll get canceled, but then it'll come back at the end. Because that's the point of a catalyst, right? That you could reuse it. Yeah, so it'll show up as a product. At the end. It'll show up as a product. So notice that the thing that got canceled here, right, was produced, right? It's not found in the beginning. So it's not a catalyst. So catalysts, you have to, you have to look at a couple problems, mm -hmm. but you'll notice that It'll get canceled like a reaction intermediate, but it will be found again at the end. So the CCL will be a one-off. Yeah, so in this case, we don't really have any, right? So it's going to oh, be, no, no, I'm saying, notice that this would have have to be found here, uh, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, so, so you can also say that intermediate is, yeah. is a product in the beginning. Wait, the reactant at the end. We get some stuff, right? Yeah. When it's the uh, catalyst the other way around, it's a reactant yeah. in the beginning, or the reaction. Maybe like write that down, right? Like get that, that solid, right? Yeah. 
So that this is, we don't have any in this case, right? So the hard part would be identify the intermediates, right? But they're juxtaposed with catalysts, mm -hmm. right? So determining the difference would be a hard question, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully it doesn't go too much into that because I don't think he went into catalysts that deep, yeah. right? But that's you're now you're prepared for that, right? Write it out, you get the answer right, okay? So the order is always going to be determined by the slow step, right? But so normally, if our slow step, but if our slow step contains an, a reaction intermediate, we can't just write it explicitly. Meaning, if this wasn't the first step, mm -hmm. it'd be fine. We'd be done, right? So if our slow step was here, our rate law would just be rate equals K, Cl2, we're done. Okay? But because it's in the second step, we need to use this equation as our rate law. But the issue is that this particular pro, uh, chemical, or Cl, is being canceled. So what we need to do is rewrite this term as something else. So let's do that. So if we, if we rewrite that, let's write the rate law for the first equation, okay? Mm -hmm. That would be rate equals K Cl2, right? That's fine. Yeah. And then I'm going to set it equal to the reverse reaction, which is K inverse of Cl squared because of the coefficient. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's the coefficient. Well, I want to rewrite this one. Well, that would look like this if it was in a reaction, Cl. And notice that it doesn't have a power to it. So I need to rewrite Cl. So I'm gonna to have to get rid of that two. How do I do that? I get the square root of both sides. Mm -hmm. Cool? Uh, well, first I can, yeah. So I'm gonna get rid of that one, so I do the square root. I can divide this one first. Right? And that would give us that, and we get the square root. That would eliminate this guy. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. All we did was get the square root of both sides. Yeah. All we did. So now, anytime I see this, sorry, CL2, right? Anytime I see this, I can replace it with this. So now this I can now rewrite this as the uh, as the order now. So I can actually do the order now, the rate, the rate law for it. So I can do rate. The second line should be what? CL C C L3. Right? Times K, right? But now I can replace that with this whole thing with, with this. So let's do that. So <laughs> my new replacement is K over K. And make sure you indicate the uh, these guys as well. The E to K, okay? You have to show fence in the, hey, I remember when this is a thing. Cool. Um, CL2. That would be to the one half power. That's my overall rate law in this case. Do you guys see that? Yeah, I see it. I don't think I can do this on my own. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. All right. So I'm all that means thing, is that I'm trying, I need to rewrite the thing that's being canceled mm -hmm. in terms of something else. So I rewrite my first equation and solve for it. Like I'm solving for y, right? Yeah. So we can like, this is almost like what? Like, uh, x squared equals y, right? Well, x, oh, so you can just get the square root. Square root. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then I'm just replacing that anytime I see x. It be here. It's just basic algebra, but for some reason, when you see chemical equations, yeah. it seems hard for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, it's like. So, what's my order of uh, Cl2? It's a one half. One, one half. It's a one half order. So you're not really used to seeing something like that, right? right? Um, as an overall last answer, we can say rate, and we can get a, we can combine these into one large K. Cool. Mm -hmm. C C L. That's it. Oh, okay. Can you it's a once you're done. you're done, show the steps of all the K's being here, and then at the end combine them into one giant K. Okay. Mm -hmm. 